This wreck is what remains of a diminutive mid-19th century settee with a rosewood frame and ornate tapering legs. It may once have graced a Victorian bedroom, but with a missing back and ruined upholstery, Drew's come up with a plan to save what he can. Are we mad doing this sofa base? Yes. Is it uh, a good use of Craig's time? No. Is it a good use of my money? No. But we will end up with something, you know? And if there's anything I don't like, it's throwing things away. I see this as window seat. Yeah. And or the best thing this can end up at is at the end of your bed. Yeah, I mean, I that's the only thing. Because it, it's got this nice flat shape on the back and then yeah. the kidney shape at the front. So yeah, yeah, you yeah. go, sort of leave me to it and I'll just do whatever I think needs doing. Yeah. Had it, new springs in it, reweb it, as long as it looks right in the end. This sofa is probably a couple of hundred years old now. The stories it could tell, the places it's been, I can see through all the rubbish that's there. This, I think, is going to be a stunning piece of furniture. The cover I want to use for it is uh, my own ticking that we're going to get printed up. So I'll, okay. I'll supply you with that as well. You can go and pick it up. Right, okay. Um, right. But apart from that, it's all yours. I'm actually quite proud of myself for finding something so terrible. I'm not proud of you at all. <laughs> anyway, all yours. All right, thanks. I've got to get all this off and down to the frame first. After that, it's quite enjoyable if this frame doesn't fall apart. What I'm going to do is go along, taking out the tacks. Sometimes working on horrible jobs like this, the bonus or the upside of it can be finding money or finding goodies inside it. It's very rare, and I've, I've got bits here that I've found over the past, what, 30 odd years. I'm also getting my little pot together for retirement. Shilling, three krona, I think it is, from 1880 something. An old watch, lighters, a few lighters, uh, whatever that is. On this polished edge here, where I've not stripped it, look at the dirt on that. A large proportion of this dust is dead skin. Over the years I've been doing upholstery, can you imagine how many people I could have made? <laughs> well, you can see there where the springs were. Just taking the tacks out of the top of this, cleaned it up a bit and I've found two posi screws here. I don't know what they're in there for, but I'm going to take them out anyway because I don't want them in there. That's why the screws were in there. The frame split and the legs fell off. Oh, it has now. <laughs> right, that's not gone to plan. In the upholstery workshop, Craig's managed to repair the damage to the frame of Drew's 19th century settee. But he now faces another challenge. The fabric Drew wants to use to cover his window seat doesn't exist anymore. Years and years ago, I found a piece of ticking on a sofa I bought in Scotland, and I tracked the maker down to an Edinburgh maker, and this was their ticking. Now, the, the firm is no longer trading, but I still have this piece of ticking, and it just, I think it's a pattern that will really work. To find out if you can get the heritage design Drew wants, Craig's come to textile printer's Tiviot Prints in Cheshire. This piece of fabric that Drew's given me is a tiny, tiny sample. I don't even know if they're going to be able to print anything from it or whether they can even use it to get a design from it. And I need five metres of this. When it was originally made, Drew's fabric would have been screen printed by hand. But design consultant Ruth Kagot has a much quicker modern method. So from this scrap of fabric, how are you going to replicate that into a bigger repeating fabric? First thing I'm going to do is scan it in. Right. I've had to look at where the repeat comes up from there to there and from there to there. And then just kind of had to fill in the other parts. And also, because when you scan it in, it's not necessarily a straight line. I've then had to re remake all the lines so that they're all perfectly straight and smooth. See, I'm a technophobe. I don't understand any of this, you see, so... How are you going to change that from this wizardry stuff here into a proper tactile piece of fabric? I can just print it directly from my computer onto the fabric. That easy? Yeah, very easy. So this printer is a big version of the thing you have on your desk at home? Yeah, it is, yeah. Right. 
So now that we've printed it, we can check that the that. colours yeah, here. Oh, oh yeah, can't, the can't tell the difference, can the you? Colours. When I brought this scrap of fabric in, I really thought you were going to turn around and say, no chance, you can't do it, or it's not big enough. But, you know, seeing what you've done there, you know, I'm really impressed with that. Right, I've got my five metres of fabric, and I'm sure once Drew sees this upholstered onto the piece of furniture, that he's going to be doing many more pieces in it. Two weeks ago, the remnants of a once elegant sofa arrived in Craig's workshop in the form of a broken frame with a missing back and some fragments of rotting upholstery. Craig has, has patched up some pretty ropey furniture for me in the past and uh, made it safe and saleable. And I think this one is going to test all of those skills. So we're starting from a very, very low point. Yep. Right. How are you doing? Not bad. Right then, let's see you. Uh, let's see you. There you go. Whoa, yes. It's come up well, hasn't it? Really well. Love that. Change from a dog bed, isn't it? Yeah. So That's yeah. Fantastic. Very nice. With Craig's patience and skill, this sofa now has a whole new lease of life. Its frame carefully reconstructed, its upholstery renewed so it can function as a window seat, and the entire piece elegantly covered in Drew's specially commissioned ticking. What can I say? I've seen the window seat now in the ticking and I couldn't be happier. Craig has made something exceptional and extremely saleable. When I started working on it, it was worse than I thought. It had some Phillips screws in one leg. I took them out to get rid of them and the leg fell off. <laughs> One of the arms was broken completely, it's, so it's all it, been... It's, it's genuinely lovely. Even though this design and this fabric is, you know, 100 years old, 150 years old, that still looks modern and good today. I'm glad you said that, because I, I was wondering whether I, I hung on to that piece of fabric for too long. Yeah. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, we've got to keep this. Yeah. The ticking for me was well worth the wait. A decade hanging on to that piece of fabric, managing not to lose it, so now seeing it on there, I think, yes, this is great. I'm going to modify it slightly, and then we'll trademark it, and that's going to be my own ticket. Couldn't be happier with it. Picked up by Drew for £60, this renewed piece of furniture will now sell for over £1,000. I didn't like this piece of furniture when it came in. Now it's finished, I could really see this either at the foot of a bed or in a window seat. And if you could have put this in a bay window, sit on that and look out the window, that'd be ideal. 